Good morning, good morning, and I am off to work. And today, I was thinking a lot about gifts and how the ENTJ uh, gives gifts and receives gifts. And uh, I guess this is a tip just for INTJs who are perhaps in a relationship with uh, ENFP and that is tip number one observe how the ENFP uh, treats you and showers gifts toward you and then duplicate that back to the ENFP because that's what they want uh, because uh, essentially uh, the ENFP they live by the golden rule which is uh, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you and uh, so it's pretty simple really I mean um, it's taken me it's I'm still not good at this but it's something that I continue to work on as an INTJ and that is observing the behaviors of my wife and simply replicating those behaviors back to her um, and, it, and it's very counterintuitive for an INTJ because uh, we feel like it's contrived on our part like um, but you know what? You got to kind of get over that feeling of, uh, you know, doing something that maybe you, you're not feeling it's coming from a pure motivation. Um, let's just say that when an INTJ does something from pure motivation, that they go all in. You know, they're all in. They do it. Um but it's just the everyday grind that uh, is difficult for the INTJ because, uh, let, let me give you an example. When I was growing up, I had my immediate family to give gifts to, okay? I had my mom, I had my dad, and my brother. So it was just my brother and I and my parents. And, and so it was very easy for me to think about the gift that I was going to give to each person for whatever occasion it was, okay? And I would put a great deal of time and energy into thinking about what would be the perfect gift. You know, like I would go to the, I would go window shopping, I would look at different things, I would just look at how much money I had at that time. It wasn't a lot. <laughs> but it was, it was, eventually I knew I would find the right gift uh, for the person. And, and, um, and so with the INTJ, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very involved process because we're, we're trying to tap into all of our resources like, okay, well, this person likes to knit or this person likes to ski or this person likes to, you know, but, but not just that, we're getting into like, what could they possibly like? So then we're getting into that, that imaginary area of what are the possibilities? Okay. Okay, now, compare that to as you get older, as you, as you marry, as you have extended families, and then it just becomes overwhelming to think about all of the different gifts that you're going to be getting everybody. And then for some reason, it becomes overwhelming to just think about that one gift uh, for your significant other. <laughs> um because you really don't know the 
the practicality of anything anymore. And like at this point in your life, you've received so many different gifts. It's like, oh, another one of these, you know. So you're always trying to try to think of that new item. So what I find myself doing, and this is a tip, is looking up, you know, gifts for, for, uh, for, for your significant other. So if you're a woman, you know, looking up gifts for, for men, if you're a man looking up gifts for women, top, top 10 gifts and, you know, kind of look and see and just see those basics, those basic gifts that, that, that are, uh, that are on the top of the list and you'll kind of figure out, you know, oh, okay, that's for my, that, that would be a good gift for my spouse. Um, the other thing is this, is like setting up a date, uh, you know, for an INTJ, it's very, uh, it's a very counterintuitive process. But today, for instance, um, I got an email notification that one of the local, uh, parks was having an outdoor concert. So I went ahead and, uh, sent a notice to my wife, you know, Hey, would you like to go to this, uh, you know, concert, it's Motown music or whatever, you know, and, uh, you know, that's just me, uh, because I know she wants to do stuff, and that's the thing about ENP, ENFPs, they want to do something new, they want to experience something new, whereas the INTJ, they want to stay in their routine, and they want to do things over and over again, until they just learn every aspect of that particular area. And for the INTJ, we see new things in the everyday routine mundane things. We That's just how we are. We are always looking at it from a different angle. It doesn't matter if we're getting up and we go through the same routine every day. We're seeing new things in it. Um... But the ENFP, they have this need to, like, have an adventure. (laughs) And that's perfectly okay. It's just that as an INTJ, you need to get used to that. And, uh, but then, you know, on on the flip side of that, the INTJ needs their routine. They need it. So they've got to have some of that. And, and, you know, it's like... In a, in a relationship, it's a give and a take, you know. So so each partner, um, you know, allows the other partner to experience their own, their own needs. You know, as an ENFP, I know my wife, she has those needs. And, and, it, and here's the thing, you know, over the years, it's becoming easier for me, but we have to be gracious to one another because, you know, these things develop, these things take years, you know, and it's like a lot of people are just throwing their hands up and giving up on relationships because, you know, this, this husband of mine is never going to learn to, to, you know, uh, cherish me the way I want to be cherished or, or, or the husband on, or the, or the wife who is an INTJ might think, Oh, this husband or wife of mine is just so uh, uh, flighty and just always changing their minds. I can't handle that. I need more routine, and you know, therefore they give up on uh, what can be a beautiful relationship. So uh, anyway, that are, those are my thoughts today on uh, gift giving and uh, and tips for uh, ENFP INTJ relationships. Uh, God bless everyone. Keep seeking truth. Happy Friday. And happy Mother's Day for all the mothers out there. And uh, I look forward to my next video. Keep seeking truth.